Uh, I'm Mark Pope, and I'm making my presentation on chivalry and knighthood in Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Yes, that is why I'm wearing a green shirt. But anyways, in Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, chivalry is demonstrated throughout the whole book, and Sir Gawain's actions, even the Green Knight's actions, but just throughout the whole book, the way he lives his life, the codes, and just every action he makes, whether it's accepting the knight's challenge or telling the truth throughout the story, just everything is related to knighthood and the code of conduct that the knights throughout the time had to live by. And in the code of chivalry, there was many different aspects, but some of the main things they had to do was they had to like fear God, live by God, and live by the church and be good Christians and people like that. They couldn't just go out living just random lives of people just going out and messing around. They were Christians, and they feared God and maintained this church. Um, major thing they had to do was they had to serve the liege, their lord, and serve in faith. They had to represent his name well. They couldn't just go and like trash his name. They had to live well according to him. They had to protect the weak and defenseless, which is pretty much what knights are really well known for today throughout movies and books and just all the stories they go by. Just protecting the weak, that's what they did. Um, they had to live by honor and for glory. They were out for whatever purpose it was, and they were in it to do it well. They were pure people. They were in it for the glory. They didn't just try to just halfway do anything. They were in it to do it right. Um, they had to obey. They had to obey those that were placed in higher authorities, whether it's king, queen, prince. Just anything. They were pretty high up on the chain themselves, but there were others that were higher ranked than them, and they had to follow all their orders throughout every day. Um, they had to guard and honor other fellow knights. So whether it's like in a fight, like a war or a battle or something, they had to protect each other. They had to like serve each other. They couldn't. They weren't just like single individuals walking around. They like were a group of people that helped and fought for each other. Um, they had to, they were not big believers in unfairness, meanness, and deceit, so they had to like be truthful and like helpful in anything. They try not to be sneaky or any way you want to put it like that. They were, they were good people and they weren't in there to just try to trick others and like mess with them in those kind of ways. Um, they were to keep faith no matter what the circumstances. They believed in God as a divine power, and everything they did, like no matter what happened, they had to stay good Christians and faithful to God. At all times, they were supposed to speak the truth, and they weren't supposed to lie about anything. And as you can tell in the story of Sir Gawain, he does a pretty good job of uh, telling the truth um, when he's giving the kisses. But he isn't completely faithful in telling the truth when he gets the green girdle after he's told not to. So it's kind of a two-way situation for him. Like he doesn't tell the truth exactly, but he does a good job in keeping the word of King's wife. Um, they knights in the old days were supposed to persevere to the end, like whenever any kind of task they started began. Like, they were supposed to go in it till the end and not quit on anything. So, once they started something, they were at it until it was over. Um, they were to respect the honor of women. Like, women, like, oftentimes you hear they weren't as respected or treated as fair in those days. And they really weren't, but still, they, knights, were meant to protect the honor of women and give them rights and just not, like, make them unfair. Um, they were never to refuse a challenge from an equal, which is very big and is part of the competitiveness of a knight that you see all the time. Uh, that's also what happened in Sir Gowan in the challenge of the Green Knight. None of the other knights were stepping up to take the challenge of the beheading game that the Green Knight had uh, declared in the hall. So none of the knights were taking it and the king King Arthur himself was about to accept the challenge just because he was so mad that none of the other knights were taking the challenge. 
So Sir Gawain stepped up and manned up and said he would take it. So he proceeded on with the challenge, and the story goes on. And knights also were never to turn them back from a foe, which obviously is what Sir Gawain did to the Green Knight. He did, he accepted the challenge and gave his word and followed through with his word all the way to the end. And as the story goes on, he was rewarded for it. He lived a good life of chivalry by the Code of Honor. Um, the Code of Chivalry, there's many different like single words that can be used to describe the traits that knights were meant to live by. And many of those words are like faith, charity, justice, things along those lines. Like prudence, temperance, truth was definitely one of the big ones. Hope and valor were very important to knighthood. Uh, diligence, just things like that. And throughout the whole story, these words were found, or not these words, I'm sorry, but like the terms that they were, that these words represent in knighthood could be seen throughout the whole story. Uh, whether it's like accepting the challenges, living by the rules, um, being faithful to God, telling the truth no matter what the situation is, never losing faith, uh, accepting every challenge, and even being respectful to women just from uh, abiding by the by the promise that he told her he wouldn't tell about the green girdle, which he didn't. So, as you can see throughout uh, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, there's many different traits of chivalry and knighthood that are represented well throughout the, the whole story. And it's uh, a good part of uh, medieval knighthood that is the conception today most of it is true and it's a very good story with chivalry and knighthood thrown out throughout the whole book and it's a very good read so thank you for your time and enjoy the presentation